Now, a lot of you have been asking about how to get into robotics. And well, this might just be the best way to get started. Let's talk about it. So let's talk about it. And let's talk about it. Eh, good enough. This here is the SL101 robot arm, or I should say arms, since I have two of them. And at first glance, they don't really seem all that special. It's a five degree of freedom design, six if you're counting the gripper. It has some decent servo motors, with the inclusion of serial bus and magnetic encoders, but it's still firmly in what I'll call the RC servo territory, in terms of performance and that classic high pitch whine. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely well designed. But in the sea of all the other robot arms out there, with similar if not better specs, why this one? Well, first off, if I'm going to argue this is a good way to get into robotics, then above all else, it better be easy to get your hands on. I bought the SL101 arms as a kit, which includes everything I needed to get them up and running. Well, everything minus a computer and a table to mount them to, I guess. For a total of $360, including shipping and tariffs. And while sure, maybe I could have gotten the price down if I sourced the parts on my own, or moved outside of the US. $360 for two robot arms? It's pretty reasonable. Like to put that price into context, if I was building IO today, $360 wouldn't even cover the cost of the motors for one of his arms. Anyways, it's time to build some arms. Now, the vendor I bought my kit from does offer a fully assembled option, but honestly, you should just do it yourself and save the 40 bucks. I promise it's really not that bad. Everyone likes comparing how difficult something is to building Legos, and sure, while this isn't quite as straightforward, it's also not that far off. A big reason why is because of the excellent documentation. It really does a good job in guiding you through the entire assembly process, even including short video clips of what to do at every step. Love it. And for me having some hardware experience already, that meant I could just turn my brain off and mindlessly follow the docs until I had a fully assembled arm in front of me. And to build the second one, you can just scroll back up and follow the same exact instructions, the only difference being in the last step. These arms are configured in what's called a leader follower setup, where as the name implies, one arm will follow the movements of the other. Or in other words, we're basically using this leader arm as a controller. From here, I mounted the controller board and wired up the motors. This was really straightforward with these serial bus servos, since you could just daisy chain them together reducing the wiring mess you normally get with your more common PWM controlled RC servos. And that's assembly done. Now to get these arms actually moving around, I'm going to be using a robotics library called LaRobot. So while past me gets that set up, let me do some explaining. First off, both the SL101 arm and the LaRobot library are developed by a company called Hugging Face, whose main thing is being an AI platform slash community where people can go to access all sorts of AI models, datasets, etc not just for robotics, which is really the only reason I'm bringing them up at all. Because as much as I appreciate the work they do in robotics, there's a lot they're involved in that I just can't bring myself to be on board with. 90% of which can be boiled down to just a complete disregard for IP when it comes to the data being used for training. It's free real estate. Like, holy shit. Just because something is publicly accessible doesn't give you the right to train on it. It's still just stealing. No matter how much mental gymnastics AI bros try to do to convince themselves otherwise. So I want to be clear, this is not an endorsement of Hugging Face or AI in general. I just happen to have a soft spot for robotics and think AI can do some good here specifically. Anyways, enough ranting, back to these arms. And putting the tacky name aside, the LaRobot library really does make things easy to get up and running. Now I should mention, the library supports more than just the SL101. But there's something to be said about the confidence that things will just work when you have both the robot and the library made by the same people. There's also a bunch of small stuff like this script to just help you find the right serial port assigned to each arm or the dead simple calibration routine. Like sure, I could have printed out the encoder values and manually written my own calibration file, but it certainly would have taken longer than just running this already included script and following the prompts on screen. Massive kudos for the quality of life features. And just like that, I'm teleoping the arm. Hey, nice. That was like what, maybe 20, 30 minutes tops since I finished assembly? That's crazy. And it's working well too. Grab. All right. Not the best grip on it, but. And then I want to drop it right in front of me. All right. Wow. Who knew having some sort of gripper or hand would be so useful? Bruh. But as cool as this is, 
Now let's try passing the controller over to AI and see what happens. The goal is simple. I just want the arm to pick up this cube, swing it around, and then drop it into the container. That should be a piece of cake, right? Right? Now to get the AI to do this, we'll need to train it first, which basically just means feeding it a bunch of examples on what to do and praying it all works out. And since I don't have footage of this particular arm picking up this particular pinkish tan cube and putting it into this particular translucent container, while on this particular cutting mat in this particular lighting laying around to use for training, we'll need to film our own. And holy shit was this mind numbing. I just sat there recording myself teleopping the arm, picking up the cube and dropping it into the container over and over again. Throw in some crashes from intermittent camera freezes or connection issues to the arm. And it's dead again. And I was about ready to keep myself safe. But eventually, I managed to get through this cruel and unusual punishment. And now we have a data set of 50 episodes ready to train the model on. But what's actually in the data set? Well, first we have the state of each joint in the arm at any given time during the episode. With a bit of math, you could use this to get the state of the arm, like the position and orientation of the gripper. But joint states only gets us what the arm itself is doing. To see how the arm is interacting with the stuff in the environment, like the table or the cube, we have these two camera feeds. One's coming from the camera module mounted to the wrist of the follower arm, and the other's from a webcam I had laying around for a top-down view of the setup. Now, the reason why I added the second camera in is because I don't think the wrist POV is going to be reliable enough by itself, especially in the beginning when the cube may not even be in frame. And likewise, if we just had the overhead camera, there's going to be times when the arm blocks the view of the cube. So while I'm sure there's ways to make a single camera work, I figured just adding a second one would be the simplest solution. That's the hope anyways, since in reality, training is a lot more abstract, and there's really no guarantee what piece of data they'll over or under index on. The bright side is that the actual training process should be pretty hands off. I just run a single command and then come back in a couple hours to a fine tuned model ready for testing. Yeah, things didn't quite turn out that way. You see, training takes a lot of compute, something that the docs do try to warn you about, but I don't think their time estimate took into account just how bad the hardware I'm working with is. Because this here is my almost nine year old computer rocking an Nvidia GTX 1060. Hey, at least it's a six gig version. But yeah, I took it down from the shelf and dusted it off mainly just to avoid having to run Linux on my main computer. This means I'm probably gonna have to wait a little longer for training to complete. Eh, no big deal. I'll just work on some other important stuff in the meantime. About a day and a half later, and now it's the moment of truth. What camera is this? Oh! You think both of them. Oh. Hey, actually, oh, that's pretty off, but it caught it. And then drop. Oh. oh, let's go! And then I made the mistake of trying it again. Yeah, I wasn't exactly able to pick up the cube again after that. Now, looking back at the footage, I think I know what went wrong. Me. It was me. You see, the only info the AI gets to work with is from these two cameras, not from another set of OP stereo cameras that can be repositioned however you want. Eyes. I'm talking about eyes. Which is why the docs even recommend that the task should be completely doable only by looking at the camera feeds. Because if you can't do it without cheating, then how do you expect the AI to? And yeah, I may or may not have ignored that advice during data collection. So let's try again. Unfortunately, this does mean I had to subject myself to hell again and re-record the dataset. This time, switching up my approach to grabbing the cube from the side, because I feel like that would give an easier angle to work with. And yes, I made sure this time around to do it only through the camera feeds. For the most part. Alright, off it goes. Drop. 
and it's working. Like, actually working. Like, multiple times in a row working. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. Like, if I'm being generous, I'd put the success rate maybe around like 50%. But it's doing good enough for me to believe that it actually quote-unquote learned something from the training data. And that's pretty sick. What was the point of this video again? Oh yeah, if this is the best way to get started in robotics. Hmm, I'm not really qualified to give an answer on best, but the SL101 is definitely not a bad way to get into it. It for sure got me more interested in the AI side of robotics. And while clearly we aren't there yet, it's pretty cool that I can learn and explore this stuff at home. Not just in a sim, but you know, on real physical hardware. Anyways, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!